All right, welcome back to Realms of Forgotten Worlds video tutorials. I'm your host, Albert Taylor, and I'd like to get into a new topic today, a very important topic. Probably not one of the funnest of all topics, but one that is uh, definitely necessary. I want to be responsible about these types of videos. I'm going to talk about the writer's health today. All right, but before we get into that, I'd like to talk a little bit about the book because you are trying to sponsor the book a little bit. Actually, it's, this video is brought to you by Realms of Forgotten Worlds, where we have 71 decisions, 234 chapters, 70 tragic endings, and one goal. Alright, so this is a very good uh, multi-option sci-fi book if you want to check it out. I'm your host and writer of this book, so I'm very proud of this accomplishment. Alright, so your adventure, you decide. Multi-option for sci-fi. Okay. All right, so now let's get to the video. All right, here we're going to talk about health. Okay, a very important topic for every writer because I am encouraging people to get into multi-option uh, writing, sci-fi as well, but um, multi-option is the focus here. But um, we want to do it in a responsible way. And through my experience, I've had some experience in this. You could say a little bit over three years. I could um, more or less talk about this topic, I think, not an expert, but we're just going to go over a little bit of my experience. All right, so we're going to talk about the writer's health. We're going to talk about the risks and the preparations. Okay, so it can be done, but we have to do it in a conscientious way. All right, so let's look at the first risk. Risk number one, shift work disorder. Okay, maybe wondering what the heck is that? Okay. Well, from my personal experience, um, I used to work as a jailer, all right, but not one of my best jobs, you could say, but it was a, a learning experience, okay, but there, um, the important thing there is um, we changed shifts, sometimes in the morning, sometimes at night, okay, it wasn't always regular, and I learned a little something about that, uh, this affects the body, okay, so there's some first-hand experience here, and also another note, I'm a night writer, <laughs> I mean, what they say, uh, night owl. So I write at night. Don't get too much done in the morning. Okay. Well, let's uh, look at a. Uh, not really going to get into that too much in this video since we are focused on health. Those uh, preparing to write a book hopefully feel motivated by my videos. All right. And want to write a book. But let's get into this one topic that may save you some pain and grief. Okay. So let's look at what is a shift work disorder. All right, very important. Um, like I said before, this is a first-hand experience from working as a jailer, working at day, working the night. Okay, not too fun, especially if they change at the last order, last hour. You just got through working a night shift, and hey, you're gonna work in the morning too. Okay, it happens. All right, very common. All right, so let's uh, look at um, the official web page here from the government. This is the U.S. National Library of Medicine. National Health Institute of Health. All right, Let's see what they have to say about it. All right, shift work disorder is a type of sleep sleep disorder that occurs when an individual is unable to successfully synchronize his or her internal clock with the work schedule that requires staying awake and working when it is dark and sleeping when it is light. Approximately 10% of shift workers suffer this from this disorder, which seriously impairs their ability to function. Shift work disorder is associated with increased risk of gastrointestinal problems, cancer, depression, heart disease, excessive sleepiness and accidents, and decreased productivity. This report describes the prevalence diagnostic criteria, differential diagnosis, and clinical consequences of work shift work disorder to help a clinic, well, doctors, in other words, recognize this impairing condition. Okay, so if you really want to get into this report, you can go to the webpage. It's um, very easy to find, I think, it's a government webpage. Just go there and you can read all of it. But basically what this is, um, all right, something you want to stay away from. Um, either work in the day or in the night. Okay, you don't want to be mixing the two. Bad idea. Your body has to get accustomed to working one or the other. I have um, over three years working at night. so. I'm still alive. All right. You may decide to work at night, but we have to take the risks 
and to uh, well, we have to take those into mind can be really conscientious to start writing and well maybe you have to outlive your competition right you just don't want to get into this and get a really good idea halfway into the project and croak all right you want to avoid that uh, outlive the competition that's the goal here okay here's a little bit more information on this topic shift work uh, disorders okay lowers your testosterone okay from a man's point of view this is um, very crucial women are also very sensitive to hormone imbalances so I imagine this would be a little more um, intense for women okay from a man's point of view from the scientific uh, research I've done here well borrowed <laughs> all right it lowers your testosterone all right curious point because in Facebook I was in a post there's a discussion of women asking wow is being a writer more romantic is your life love life uh, increased or excitement I suspect that it's not if there's a <laughs> night rider in there like me this could get a little cold I think all right maybe not a little cold but kind of decrease in intensity okay so you want to avoid that lowering testosterone and women lowering their other hormones they have a lot that get them really angry sometimes all right okay so work shift disorder you have to work day or the night all right mixing the two remember there's a lot of um, criticism too people are really critical on writers there's especially if you stay home and you're writing you don't want to rent the office and people are really critical and the criticism um, thinking today about that it's kind of like water it may stay out sometime but it eventually kind of leak in all right it'll eventually get to you okay so you might feel forced by the culture to start waking up early especially if you um, well imagine if you've been working to four or three or four in the morning I won't say five o'clock that's a little extreme but um three or four in the morning you want to get um maybe five or six hours rest but people be criticizing that won't they and they see you wake up at 12. Um, we talked a little bit about this before and maybe we'll get a little bit more into the criticism part okay so it is a very important part of the writers okay so risk number two okay we want to avoid damage to your body okay very important because you want to write many books not just one okay that's a very important part right of writing okay so we got this from the um, Washington Post should be a pretty credible site maybe I've heard some not so good things about their the procedures lately but we won't really want to get into that it's talking more about politics all right might get into some really heated discussions if I get into politics okay so we'll stay away from politics today and maybe we'll trust a little bit of Washington Post today all right on this topic maybe okay so organ damage heart disease okay that's a big one um, I've had some issues in the past with um, the heart Let's say it has some circulatory say this functions maybe okay hopefully I've corrected those I've been taking uh, well, some supplements we'll get into that here in a few seconds okay so some things can be um, reversed we'll get into too much of that since I'm not a certified doctor okay but I've been studying a little bit of uh, natural medicine okay so the good thing is you can correct uh, things in your body keep that in mind all right so we'll talk about heart disease okay circulation um, the writer may be more focused on their mind good point point. Um, we use our minds to write right and plus our hands for the keyboard and want to keep keep the blood flowing to the mind so um, Focus on the heart may be a really serious topic some might be wanting to focus on. Okay, there's some supplements we can take. Okay, omega-3, for example. That's what I take daily because I like writing and I'm always here in this sitting position, which isn't very good for circulation, by the way. Okay, so we need to change our practice, more exercise and stuff like that. Unfortunately, me included, not everybody may be into this okay so we have to get a little more exercise in our life 
Okay, another one is uh, overproductive pancreas. All right, this is very true because um, diabetes, especially where I'm at, is um, there's a lot of people with diabetes, and there's some reasons for that. Um, we blame sugar, but we hardly ever uh, blame our activity, physical activity, which has a whole lot to do with that. Sitting position doesn't help at all. Okay, so we need to keep our activity up. Okay, not just sitting at the computer all day. We'll talk about that. Um, well, we kind of uh, touched that on that, didn't we? Okay, the morning or the afternoon or the evening. Okay, I have to choose one. So in the morning, if you're a night person, do some physical activity, um, do something else that requires your body to do more things. And at night, well, you focus on writing. Okay, good balance. Well, if you're a morning person, do the opposite. Exercise at night and do your writing in the morning. Okay, good idea. All right, so we want to keep our pancreas working normally. All right, so it's not producing too much insulin. Okay, so we don't have uh, insulin resistance in our bodies, so we can absorb all the sugar. So it's not um, producing too much insulin, which is what um, diabetes is. How about we read into here? The pancreas produces insulin, a hormone that carries glucose to cells for energy. But cells in idle muscles don't respond as readily to insulin. So the pancreas produces more and more. Uh, this is the problem we talked about, which can lead to di diabetes and other diseases. In 2011, a 2011 study found a decline in insulin response just one day of prolonged sitting. Okay, so this may affect um, your energy levels. This affects a whole lot of things. Uh, you want to avoid diabetes if you can. All right, another one, colon cancer. This is one of my big ones here. Uh, want to eat enough fiber to keep the colon clean so you don't get cancer there. All right, studies have linked uh, sitting to a greater risk of co for colon uh, colon cancer, breast and endometrial cancers. Reason is unclear, but one theory is that excess insulin encourages cell growth. Another is that regular movement boosts natural antioxidants that kill cell damaging. Okay, actually talking about the contrary, uh, the lack of movement would have the opposite effect Less an antioxidants that kill. Okay, that kill. Um, I don't think so. No. Okay, antioxidants. Um, they prevent uh, cell damage, basically. Okay, so the activity boosts the antioxidants. All right. All right. So we want to avoid colon cancer. I've personally seen some cases of colon cancer. It's not pretty. It's pretty. Um, well, it changed your life. That, that's for sure. Okay. Muscle degeneration. That's kind of obvious, right? If you sit at the computer all day, some muscles are working, some aren't. Your finger muscles are working, obviously. Your legs, not so much. Okay, so we can kind of um, brush on that a um, little bit. It's kind of obvious, I think. Your muscles are working or they're not. So the ones that are, they get more accustomed to moving. The ones that aren't, well, they just get accustomed to not moving. All right, it's kind of common sense, I think. All right, leg disorders. All right. Well, unfortunately, um, the legs suffer more from the circulation problems. Okay, the cold feet and um, all the viruses and all that. Okay, so kind of obvious too. If you're not moving, the blood's not circulating too much, and the first place to suffer from that is your legs. Okay. Another one is soft bones. Weight-bearing activities such as walking, and running, stimulate hip and lower body bones to grow thicker, denser, and stronger. Scientists partially attribute the recent surge in cases of osteoporosis to lack of activity. Okay, so may or may not know that. All right, so you have softer bones. Okay, another, um, well, we'll get into this a little later, but um, supplements. Okay, we have to counter that. Don't want soft bones. Okay, trouble at the top. We kind of touched on this, the foggy brain. All right, we want to keep the brain sharp and active. All right, we need blood and and oxygen for that. Like it says here, moving muscles pump fresh blood and oxygen through the brain and trigger the release of all sorts of brain and mood enhancing chemicals. When we are sedimentary for a long time, everything slows, including brain function. All right. We may consider a little warm up exercise before writing. I sometimes do it, sometimes I don't. Well, most of the time I don't, but I should. All right, strained neck. Okay, we got a kind of practice that getting the back straight and your neck up okay so 
keep the strain off your neck. It happens more with people with cell phones, I think. So you get the cell phone, you're just looking down, all right? Bad circulation in the neck. All right, sore shoulders and back. Okay, so that kind of creates a stress on the back too. Sore shoulders and back. The neck doesn't slouch alone. Slumping forward overextends shoulder and back muscles as well, particularly the uh, terapeuses, <laughs> which connects the neck and shoulders. Okay, that's kind of common sense. If you take into account all the muscles there connected to your neck. All right. Okay, bad back. That's kind of obvious, right? Um, remember my mother used to say, sit up straight? Well, there's a reason for that. Okay, here we see an inflexible spine. Okay, so it could damage your back, the spinal cord. Okay, this damage. Okay, well, I'm kind of, uh, kind of believe that. I've seen uh, worse jobs in writing that damage the back. All right, but um, sitting up straight could uh, save you a lot of pain, basically. Okay, so after all, I'm one of those included here. I still want to write. Definitely. Okay, that's for me. Okay, so there's some things to do. We saw the negative things. Let's see some of the things we could do to improve those situations. All right. First thing, well, we already talked about, avoid shift work disorder. Okay, if you can. If you have a job that doesn't allow this and... Well, you have to find a different way, okay? But if you can, avoid this, okay? If you're a morning rider, uh, stick to the mornings. If you're an evening rider, stick to the evenings, okay? Try, if you can, to ignore all the criticism, all right? Well, I get heavy criticism because I'm a night rider. So in the morning when people don't see me, oh, he's sleeping late again, okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. But nobody ever sees me at 4 in the morning, right? <laughs> and I'm here writing and taking notes and trying to be productive nobody sees that okay well many of you can uh, understand that but um, unfortunately it's a cultural thing and I've learned fighting with culture is um, futile just save your energy yeah you're not gonna win okay so um, just try your best to avoid the criticism and do your best job you say hey I finished the book that may um, solve a little bit of that all right but well, that's a battle every writer has to face. Okay. First one, I think, is a um, very big one. Prevent circulatory problems. Okay. So one thing I take uh, daily, okay, without forgetting, well, maybe once in a while, but I take the omega-3. All right. This is a very important... I think I'm still alive because of this, because I did have some health issues before with uh, circulation. Well, not really connected to writing, but I used to be an office working. Or used to work in a oil company. They have really, really long hours. And if I remember correctly, I ended at 8 in the morning. I sometimes leaving the office 10, 11 at night. Okay, that's a pretty intense um, work schedule, isn't it? Sitting down in the chair with the bad, bad back position. And shoulders and headaches constantly. All right, I had a lot of symptoms, uh, circulatory problems there. Okay, I won't get too much into that, but I kind of uh, I got things a little better, yeah, taking supplements. Okay, so here, this um, you can get more information here at this website here, uh, livestrong.com. All right, it's, um, it's okay website. Uh, they kind of uh, got around the, the term omega-3. Uh, I just put it in there. They just uh, went into official, I guess, uh, disclaimer, I guess. But here, basically, it's the same official, omega-3. You can get it from other substances, too. But um, fish oil contains EPA. All right, I won't even try to pronounce that. And DHA, and I won't pronounce that either. <laughs> okay. And Mayo Clinic reports that ingesting EPA and DHA through fish or fish oil supplements can decrease your risk of heart attacks as well as rheumatis rheumatics and strokes. Fish oil reduces uh, triglyceride levels in your blood, so the chance of adding more plaque to your arteries also diminishes. That's important. All right, I used to think uh, you have the plaque in your arteries and well, too bad, it's gonna be there. But there's um, ways to, to diminish that, to get it lower. It's really important. Okay, fish oil also helps to clear out some of the plaque already in place. 
which opens your arteries and helps your blood flow through them more efficiently. This increases circulation to all parts of your body and your brain. All right, the most important place for a writer. All right, so this is very, very, very important. Okay, all right, so we touched on this too, the proper way to sit up. Okay, I'm trying to do that right now. It's uh, hard if you don't have the practice. Sit straight. Your neck is a very important part of the circulation as well. Shoulders back and you have to gotta gotta practice that. This is also from also from the Washington Post dot com for more information there. You can see this article. Okay, so we wanna keep our hormone levels in balance. Alright. We talked about this, the testosterone in men and other hormones and women, they have a few. Alright, and we're gonna focus more on the evening writer. I suspect a lot of uh, science fiction writers are in the evening. Non-fiction is probably in the, in the day. Uh, you need a lot of inspiration, imagination, stuff for the evening. And I've heard a lot of uh, testimonials for people who work uh, at night. They're more inspired uh, to write their science fiction at night. Okay, so we'll just um, go that side for now for the evening writer. Okay, so here's some information about vitamin E. Alright, very important. Vitamin E also for cosmetics for the women, also for men. You need to keep your testosterone levels up. Okay, so you can be manly and you want uh, <laughs> you won't go under while you're riding all those long nights. Alright, very important for the men to keep their testosterone levels up. And apart from the help your marriage too and your all the other manly aspects of your life. Okay, and you can find this in anabolicmen.com. Alright, very important. Keep your testosterone levels up. Alright, this is a good part here. I've actually had some really extensive experience on this side. And most of us drink coffee. Actually, the writers are really... Uh, when you picture writer, you think of coffee, right? Automatic writer, coffee, coffee writer. So, um, a coffee drinker is a writer, basically. So the bad thing is um, drink too much coffee and your vitamin levels go down, well, especially your vitamin B. Okay, so basically uh, coffee eliminates water from your body. All right, so vitamin B is uh, soluble in water, so it's eliminated when you drink a lot of coffee. Okay, it just goes out, it gets uh, filtered out and it's gone. Okay, there's other ways to uh, eliminate water from your body, but coffee is uh, one of the most common and common to me too. So I have one supplement especially for vitamin B. You have to find a good one because the cheap ones usually have some vitamin B's but not all of them. It's kind of uh, difficult to find one that has all of them. Okay, but it can be done. It doesn't have to be too expensive either. That's another aspect of it. To keep it uh, good and, and cheap. Alright. You can spend the money if you want but there's some economic products out there that do practically the same. All right. I won't give any brands, really, because um, well, I've been disappointed by some brands in the, in the past and I don't want to give bad advice here. All right, but I'm sure you could find something, something uh, good and not too expensive. Okay, so here's some information here. Basically, what we talked about before, um, coffee, caffeine depletes um, vitamin B. Okay, since it's soluble in water, it just goes out, gets, uh, gets filtered out. Okay, and also has some uh, reactions on other absorption as well. Okay, but the main one here that we're focusing on as uh, writers, vitamin B, because that keeps our energy level up, keeps us writing. Okay, the mind active. Okay, the other ones are good too. I won't say they're not, but uh, vitamin B, for the sake of this subject, we have to keep it up. Okay, so coffee is good, has some good uh, properties. Uh, I read that it uh, prevents uh, schizophrenia, for one, which is a really, really good thing. So I still drink coffee. I drink one cup in the morning, one at night. I also take a vitamin B supplement and drink more water as well. Okay, and that kind of more or less balances there. Okay, of course, if you drink more coffee, you have to, uh, well, yeah can't really take more vitamin B but you can take some natural steps to counter that alright 
So we want to fight brain fog. Okay, this is number one. So you want to get your book out, but you also want to do some quality writing, right? Okay, you just don't want to write anything down, fill some pages, right? That's not the objective. So we want to avoid brain fog. So not writing just to, to write. Get some inspiration in those. Well, we talked about the Zen moments, okay, the Zen state of mind. We, the writer is in that moment, last, you know, 10 to 20 minutes maybe. Okay, just write it down, anything down really fast. It's not really possible if you have brain fog. Okay, you just can't think straight, the thoughts aren't coming out. Okay, so we maintain an active mind. All right, vitamin B is very crucial for that. All right, so we see here imagination is critical in sci fi, especially sci fi. Non fiction, where you're just basically getting information from other sources. Sci fi, you're, well, you're going after your own subject here, basically. You're thinking, creating, and inventing new things constantly. And it takes a lot of brain power. Okay, so vitamin B important. How about the exercise aspect of this? Okay, uh, it's, it's a subject not too many people have talked about. How do you exercise your brain? Well, how about games? They get a lot of cri criticism. So I criticism. I criticize my son sometimes because he always wants to play, but there's some benefits in playing. Okay, and it's scientifically proven here. All right, video games can change your brain. In this case, for the better. Of course, you don't want to go in excess because you can't play too long and and not do other things. In my case, I have to. Uh, there's a little discipline involved in that too because uh, you want to be constantly playing, and I do it. So you get a first-player game like uh, Fallout. Wow, that takes hours. That's a really good game, but you have to kind of uh, you have to have some discipline in there to to control the hours. Maybe uh, tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna play one or two hours this day, and then it's work. Well, what I'm doing right now is um, Sundays. Okay, you may want to go to church and come back and you play. Okay, just one day of the week, you can explain that pretty easily. Your family may or may not understand, but say, okay, just give me one day. Let me play or something. and That's some uh, really, really good uh, brain exercise. See here the summary scientists have collected and summarized studies looking at how video games can shape our brains and behavior. Research to date suggests that playing video games can change the brain regions responsible for attention and video spatial skills and make them more efficient. Researchers also looked at studies exploring brain regions associated with the reward system and how these are related to video game addiction. Okay, uh, we talked about that, right? All right. have to have a little bit of uh, control there, not to play too much. All right. The reward system. Well, your brain really likes it, something good. Your brain looks for more. Okay, and writer related, it is very good, especially in the science fiction uh, area. Okay. So do it, control it, and uh, it'll be something positive for your writing experience. Another thing, this is kind of uh, difficult for some people. For me it is, um, especially the two liter of water thing is kind of uh, difficult. I have to admit that uh, sometimes get one liter of water down, but two is kind of hard. Okay, but it's very, very, very important for the brain. Okay, your brain can work a whole lot faster. Just need a little bit of H2O in there. Okay, if you want to read the article here, I have the link up above. PhoenixNeurology.com. That's a pretty reliable site. Oh, this is pretty common sense anyway. So, who doesn't know that water improves your brain, your brain functions? Okay, also helps you lose weight, by the way. Which would be another thing for riders if we're sitting down all day. Want to lose weight as well. Okay, so we need uh, plenty of water. Okay. Plenty of water, maybe a little less coffee. Keep your supplements up and your brain should be working pretty good. Okay, you avoid a lot of problems to the whole list of risks that we saw up above. Okay, so you can be a writer, you can be safe about it. You really don't think about writing as a, a danger, do we? That's kind of uh, strange to hear. But we have to write, be responsible. Okay, I'd be really irresponsible if I encourage people to write and something happened. Okay, I don't want that on the my conscience. So I'll upload this video then 
you decide for yourself. All right, another one, not very popular exercise. Okay, we wanna be uh, in the office doing something here, intellectual, right? So the exercise part of it. It would take some uh, time out of your writing schedule, that's true. Okay, but it also keep your energy levels up. Energy levels are really, really important if you're gonna be here on the keyboard and um, well, you don't need too much energy, but you need enough to be uh, thinking and quickly and, and give um, narratives and uh, something really smart you can put in your book. That takes energy. Okay, believe it or not, it takes uh, bodily energy. Sometimes when you write a lot, you feel exhausted. There's a reason for that. Either working your muscles or your brain. All right, so your brain takes energy. So the thing here is to keep your energy levels up. Very important. So you could do some moderate exercise. Um, I don't really do exercise, but I try to do other things. I like carpentry and other things that require some physical activity. So I'm kind of imbalanced. Not too much. I could be better. But, well, that's some advice there. And as always, um, in the video below, write all your comments down there. Really appreciate the people who've commented already in the video. Uh, subscribe as well. And I uh, hope you really like this video. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.